Hello, check. Okay, we're good. It's me again with the uh, TPS 65131 proto board. This is a picture of the blank board itself without any parts on it or whatnot. You got the schematic going here and went back over here. This is the obviously the circuit board itself. I'm going to pull off or turn off the back silk screen. Anything that's extraneous, I'll turn off the bottom layer as well. Here's the top layer. Only the top layer, because if you remember right, the bottom layer is just nothing but a bunch of traces. All right, so the schematic, a little quick run through here. These two are the, here I'll bring this up. These two are the jacks down here, the 2.1 inch header pads for uh, power in. Don't know why I put two down there, I just figured it'd be kind of handy. Four three pin headers for the jumpers for the enables and the power save enable switch. If you turn on the power save at lower loads, the chip is able to enter a discontinuous mode where it turns the converters on and off and you get a little more ripple on the output but uh, saves a lot of power at lower loads. At high loads it doesn't make a difference and if you don't turn on the power save when you're at low loads, you'll waste a lot of power, a lot of heat. Uh, what this is covering up is just the four output capacitors on the negative side and the output jack over here. Negative doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, all I get there is switching noise, which is 10, 20 millivolts, give or take. Doesn't really matter. It follows the data sheet pretty pretty well. Up here we got our four output capacitors, 4.7 microfarads, same as the negative side output capacitor, 4.7 microfarads, all in a row. The negatives are a fair amount closer to the output pins than the positives are. Positive, you got to run through this trace and get to this pin right there. So your power comes in, gives you power to the, the one side of the three pin headers, the four three pin headers for the mode selection goes through the resistor, current limiting resistor, or decoupling cap to the VN of the chip itself, which is uh, power, your control power for your switching circuits, etc, etc. It doesn't, no juice actually flows through here, no appreciable juice. The so one mod I've done, I stacked a 4.7 microfarad on top of this 0.1. Literally, physically stacked a 4.7 on top of it. See what happens. Didn't change anything. It was worth a shot. So in addition to all these parts I've got mounted on here, I've stacked 0.1 microfarads on top of this one, this one, and two of these capacitors as well. So I got 2.1 in addition to all these 4.7s up here and down here. I've got another 4.7 stacked on top of this one. I've got a 2200 microfarad stacked into these pins on the bottom side of the circuit board a 120 tied into these two pins on the bottom of the board just a big old uh through hole electrolytic i got a 0.1 tantalum across this one or a one microfarad tantalum across these two pins just surface mount laying across the two pins and a 0.1 laying across these as soon as i added the 120 on the bottom the through hole part it knocked down the input ripple by quite a bit. It went from uh, about half a volt down to roughly 160 millivolts. Adding the 2200 over here didn't do any, any bit of good. I haven't done an ESR check on it. It is an old capacitor that was laying in my bin, so I don't know if that was doing any good or not. Maybe the thing is worn out, you know, dried out, got a really high ESR. I'm not sure, but it was worth a shot. So I'll probably pull that off later tonight, just check the ESR on one of my little testers and see what happens. On the feedback side, for the heck of it, I stuffed a 4.7 over the top of this 6.8 picofarad. I put a 4.7 microfarad on top of this 6.8 picofarad. That's the feed forward capacitor for the uh, feedback. Obviously, it didn't help anything, but, you know, not that I'm getting desperate, but I'm getting desperate. These two vias right here, I will switch over the board. These, This via and this via right here are part of... This is coming off the inductor going back into the chip. This is coming out. Here's the catch diode right here. This via was unplugged. So, you know, as you can see right here, it was blocking quite a bit of that trace itself. Same thing in this one over here. Blocking quite a bit of the trace and the one on the negative side. I shoved a piece of wire through there, soldered it up. Basically, the hole isn't there anymore. Uh, this via, this via, and this one over here corresponds to this one, this one, and that one right there. Yeah, I stacked the, the 0.1 on top of the 4.7 here, and here, here, and here. I'm going to stack another couple of 4.7s on top of these two here, and on top of whatever I can fit a couple of more 4.7s over here. That is a long trace going from that capacitor over to here. I don't know if that affects a lot, because the wobble, or the ripple is also on the input side, as well as the, the uh, positive output side, and they follow each other, same frequency. Um, when this dropped from 500 millivolts down to 160 millivolts, the ripple that is, on the input side, the output ripple dropped, we'll say proportionally, 
not exactly the same, you know, it didn't drop by a factor of three or whatnot. It just, it dropped a fair amount. The negative side didn't change at all because, again, it's it's good. Around 10, 20 millivolts with the spiky 1.3 megahertz switching noise, it's all good-ish. And, it, uh, again, on, on the uh, part of the feed uh, feed forward capacitor for the uh, feedback loop, I threw a 4.7 on top of that, thinking maybe my feedback voltage is getting messed with with the... Uh, the ripple on the input side here, I'm not sure. So the next thing is, if you look here, juice has got to go in through here, across this 4.7, across this uh, P-channel MOSFET, which is the uh, sw input switching MOSFET, which turns the juice off and on, because if, if the chip is off and this thing is just left floating, it'll be turned on because the uh, gate is low. Well, juice can go right through, right through the inductor, right through the diode, right to the output. And whether that's 3 volts or 2 volts or 1 volt or 5 or 20, 10 or 20 or whatever it is, it can feed the output. It can feed pull-up resistors and pull-downs and whatnot. So that, that's a power loss or juice loss. So what they do is switching. you got a switch uh, uh, line here, which basically turn, or puts a high on this uh, MOSFET and turns it off when the enable is off. So and if you look at the uh, circuit board here, all that juice has got to go through this little SOT23 package. Right there, all the positive juice has got to go across this. That little thing in there, that little SOT23 package. Right there. Combine that with the fact that a P-channel MOSFET doesn't exactly have a low RDS, even at a decent gate voltage. That could potentially be a limiting factor, but it still doesn't account for the ripple here in the input. That's got to be upstream, you know, off the board somewhere. Yeah, the feedback here, feedback loop, that's a variable resistor there. The three terminal top top um, screwed trimmer, 15 turn trimmer, same thing with this one here for adjusting the positive and the negative output voltages, which run right here. That's part of your feedback right here. The negative is up here. Uh, let's see, R2A, yep, yep, all these. So yeah, that's kind of long, but uh, what are you going to do? I'm using 1206 parts. I don't want to use 0402. My eyes can't handle that anymore. So I'm thinking on the next board, I'm going to take and extend this out just a little bit here. Push those out a bit, and I'm going to get some of them round Panasonic surface mount aluminum electrolytic capacitors. The ones that are about, uh, say, quarter inch diameter, maybe quarter inch tall. They look like little miniature pop cans, silver on the outside and whatnot. Two pins off the bottom. Change these lands around, move this out a bit, change these lands, change these lands, and basically turn these into some big fat caps along here with a, with a couple of 4.7s sprinkled in there, maybe some point ones. And the same thing for the input. Move that down a couple tenths of an inch, and just basically have a row of those caps for the input, unless I can find some really high value, um, high value aluminum electrolytics there that'll handle 510 volts. That's about it for now, I guess.